Hey, it's uh, Merrill. First, I wanted to say a big thank you. Uh, I have 150 subscribers. I'm very excited about that. I never thought um, I'd get 150 uh, in my little art channel here, so uh, thank you very much for that. Um, today, I'm going to be uh, answering some requests, and I never thought to be getting those either. Uh, one was from the True 1414 um, who asked me to teach a little bit about how to draw objects with pencil, um, and to go into detail on how to use different types of pencils. So I could definitely do that. The second one was uh, actually over a month ago from uh, user Blue Yoshi Menace. And um, Blue Yoshi Menace wanted me to uh, draw uh, a glass of water and uh, go into detail on how to use Prismacolor markers uh, to draw water in a glass. So I will definitely do that. Um, these, it, it's actually going to be in two parts. Yeah, part one is going to be with the pencil and part two uh, a separate video is going to be uh, with the markers and I'm going to finish that one up with uh, paint like I usually do. Alright, let's get to work. Here's three hints that I want you to remember. Hint number one is to see things as shapes. I like to analogize drawing with assembling a jigsaw puzzle because in both uh, you look for shapes to fit together. So hint number two is to pay close attention to the edges, and right now uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I want to illustrate to you that uh, each one of the edges on this glass are quite different. So let's zoom in. Um, over here on the right side of the glass you see a very solid edge um, and a dark tone. Uh, you see a more neutral tone over in here and a little bit more of a fuzzy edge, uh, but as you go to the top you actually see a highlight over in here. And as you watch the video, I'm going to show you how uh, to get each one of these effects. Hint number three is to develop your drawing like a Polaroid photograph. Polaroid was the company that innovated instant photography. After pushing the shutter button, the photograph would come out of the camera and develop before your eyes. What I want you to know about this is that every part of the photo would develop at the same rate, and that is how I want you to try to draw next time. In other words, move the drawing tool around. Don't get stuck in a favorite spot. All right, let's slow it down. What you are seeing me do here is pay close attention to the form and the proportions. In other words, I'm comparing the sizes of the different shapes and making sure that the placement of each line is correct. I'm using vine charcoal, an HB pencil, and an eraser. I started out with the vine charcoal because it is easy to erase and move around. You will see later in this video that after I am satisfied with the placement of the charcoal, I will hatch over it with a pencil to keep it undisturbed. I am also trying to be aware of the edges of my shapes, and I am especially cognizant of the highlight on the top, because that will require me shading the areas around it, and using the white of the page as a representation of the strong light. Now when I look back at my reference, I notice that the tone of the background is much darker than the white of the page. I used the side of the charcoal to darken the mid-tone of my drawing. This step will make it easy to draw in the highlights with an eraser a little bit later. Now I'm folding a piece of paper towel to smudge in the charcoal. You will get a very similar result with a blending stump, but the towel will smudge the charcoal more quickly. To be perfectly honest, many teachers that I have had told me not to use a blending stump, fingers, or anything else that would come into contact with the surface of the paper. I partially agree. Oil from fingers when combined with pencil or charcoal leaves a stain that is tough to work around. Notice that my hand is resting on a sheet of paper. Artists call these slip sheets, but it is just a piece of computer paper. I like working with the blending stump and the paper, and this process works for my needs. It would be dishonest if I changed my process for the sake of making a video. Before. I mentioned the term hatching. Hatching is the short name for the drawing technique of cross-hatching. It is simply putting a series of lines next to one another with a drawing tool. These lines usually follow the shape of the object that is being drawn. Once I am done adding pencil marks, I take the blending stub to burnish over my hatch marks. This gives my drawing a more smudged look and possibly my former art teachers a heart attack. I like to smudge the pencil and charcoal because it gives me a surface that is smooth in tone. Hatching can be layered and I usually stop using the blending stump after the second layer. I once did 10 layers of hatching in a pencil drawer.
Let's recap and take this to the end of part one. My focus over the course of any drawing that I do from observation is to see a simple pattern of shapes on my reference and to accurately render these shapes onto the piece of paper that I am drawing. After I get the shapes aligned correctly, I attempt to build up the tones with charcoal and pencil. When I am building the tones, I am very aware of the nuances of the edges of each shape because they are usually different. My focus is also on building the tones of my drawing in a similar manner to how a Polaroid photograph develops. In part two, I will teach you a way to add color uh, to any pencil drawing. Thanks for watching the video and please let me know if this helped.